Good day, viewers, and Happy New Year. I want to thank God for a blissful Christmas and for God's grace that has seen us to a brand new year. I trust God that this year will be greater and will work closer with Him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today we are starting with a new theme for the year, Covenant with the Living God. But just by way of summary, last year the Lord helped us. We considered in the name of Christ. And we looked at about 11 sub team under that topic. And I'm sure the Lord brought us to a point where we understood the power and efficacy of the name Jesus. This year, as we set to introduce the team, Covenant with the Living God, I'd like to start by quickly bringing to us the message of the primate of our communion that will guide us as we consider our Bible study manual for this year, 2021. I read. We are grateful to the Lord for his enabling grace granted unto the Church of Nigeria Committee on Liturgy and Spirituality for this sound systematic Bible study outline for use in all our churches. We are glad that the committee has continued to give commendable attention to this aspect of our church worship and spirituality. The theme of the Bible study last year was, In the Name of Jesus, we thank God for opening our eyes and to gain an in-depth understanding of the meaning and power of the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that our study time together in our groups and churches was rewarding and our understanding has been thoroughly deepened. On our study this year, we will examine the theme, Covenant with the Living God. This study is intended to expound the meaning and benefits of worshipping God genuinely in contrast with other gods as God's covenant people, a very special people purchased by Christ's blood, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people called to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Our prayer is that the church of God shall rise up to her calling of revealing the living God to the world. We shall not fail to commend the Church of Nigeria's Liturgy and Spirituality Committee, especially the Bible study team of writers and consultants whose painstaking effort has made this work possible. To the glory of God and edification of God's people, we present this Bible study outline for use in all our churches and institutions for the year 2021 for our spiritual growth and overall development of godliness. The Lord be with you. Signed, the Most Reverend Henry C. Indekoba, Archbishop Metropolitan and Primate of all Nigeria. I think this is quite instructive, the message that has come from the Father of our church. And I'd like to encourage you to take these studies seriously this year as we set to work closely with God in the realm of covenant. God indeed will bless you richly. And to that end, I enjoin you to invite every member of your household, as we said to begin the year, sit briefly as we learn under the feet of Jesus. We're also excited that today as we introduce this study, we have our fathers in the Lord, our brothers, seasoned Bible study expositors, whom I know are not new on this platform. By my left is Sir Chukuka Enendo. He's a lay reader in our communion and a Bible study teacher. Anglican Church of the Resurrection, Dubai, here in Abuja Diocese. Welcome to the program, sir. Welcome, viewers. And then by my right is Engineer Ovi Ajekbiyede, a Bible study teacher, also from the Anglican Church of the Resurrection, Dubai, here in Abuja Diocese. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Good day, viewers, and Happy New Year, and the Lord be with you. Now, our sub team under this general team covenant with the living God, our sub team for today will be the living God. Who is he? And will be considering the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. Our aims will be to enlighten us about the nature of God as the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent one. And secondly, to challenge us to a life of devotion in worship and service. Quickly in our tradition, I would like to invite our resource persons to help us read our background text. Senendo. Psalm chapter 147, verse 5, in Geneva, John 16, verse 30. And I'll take Acts 17, 
27 to 28, as we build the discussion together from there. It says, Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. John 16:30 in Geneva, sir. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou comest from God. And I read Acts chapter 17, 27 to 28 from the New King James Version of the Scripture. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might group for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Introduction quickly. When we say God is omnipotent, we mean he has unlimited power. That is, he is all-powerful. The reason he is called El Shaddai, the self-sufficient one. When we say he is omniscient, we mean he knows all things. And when we say he's omnipresent, we mean his presence is everywhere. Understanding this nature of God should trigger devotion in believers' life, worship, and service. Let us proceed to the study as we intend to get more details by the help of the Holy Spirit. I think our introduction is quite succinct. We are looking at the omnipotent God. The omniscient one and the omnipresent one. Sometime last in our discussion on in the name Jesus, we considered, I think, a few of these attributes. And we'll be building on those as we set for the year, trusting that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But just before we get into the study guide question one, St. Endosa, you know we are considering covenant with the living God. I think it will help for us to understand what covenant is as we set for this year's study. Yeah, thank you, Ebuka. Um, covenant, in its simplest form, is agreement between two parties. Yes, sir. But I will go further to say that there can be covenant between two equal partners. Yes, sir. And there can also be covenant between two partners that are not equal. equal. For example, covenant between God and A man. man. And it's called the suzerainty covenant. Yes, sir. In which case, God is the higher authority. Yes, sir. A man is the lower authority. Yes, sir. In a nutshell, that would be the way I would put it. Yes, sir. And I like the way the theme for the year is framed. Not just covenant with any God, but it was quite particular to say with the living God. How do you see this? Because for someone out there who is setting to set on a journey this year, how important will it be for that man to make this covenant, this agreement, not just with anybody, but with this one and only living God, sir? Briefly. Yeah, the... God himself is covenant keeper. Yes, sir. He does not fail. When you have agreement with God, he does not fail. Mm. And so that should be a motivation for us mm. to have this agreement within this year. Mm -hmm. So that he always fulfills his own part of the agreement. Mm. When he promises to keep us, he will keep us. Yes, sir. If he promises to protect us, he will protect us. Mm. If he promises to bless us, he will bless us. Awesome. Hmm. So that is why it is important for us to have this covenant within this year in particular. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Engineer, yes, sir. Briefly, your thought on this. Because I'm looking at this year for us as a communion yeah. and for that person out there who is watching. The 
implication of getting to know this God and to work with him, as we said for the year? Just briefly. Okay. We note from what we have just said that covenant is a binding agreement. Mm. And usually it has consequences for default. So if God will not default, then anybody who is this year saying, I want to make a covenant with God, must mm. also be ready mm. to keep his own part of the covenant. Awesome. Because one thing is to enter into a covenant. Covenant has consequences for default. Yes, sir. So now we have been able to establish that God will not default. So if God will not default and you must benefit from the covenant, then the other party now, which is man, must do all he can to make sure that awesome. he will not default in that covenant. Awesome. That's the way I want to look at it. Awesome. In, so, in fact, as we are talking, I'm searching that scripture. I think Psalm 89. When you say God will not default of his covenant, covenant. I think Psalm 89 verse 34. The Bible said, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of, of my, my mouth. mouth. That's God speaking to you. God is said to back you. God is said to preserve you this year. But just be sure that you walk in obedience with him. Study guide question once and now. How is God described in these passages and what do they mean? You help us with Genesis chapter Genesis 17, chapter verse 1 in Genovia. Exodus 6 3 quickly. How is God described in these passages and what do they mean for us? Genesis 17 1, Exodus 6 3. If you're there, you can. Genesis okay. 17 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Awesome. Exodus 6, verse 3, quickly. Okay, Exodus 6, verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So, sir, these two scriptures now, how is this God, this living God, this covenant-keeping God described? God said, I am God Almighty. Mighty. Almighty means that he has all the powers. His power is infinite. Mm. You can't measure it. He has no beginning. He has no end. Awesome. You can't even quantify it. The power of God. Mm. Dynamis. So that is God Almighty. That's what he said. I am God Almighty. Which by implication means there is nothing yes. impossible for him. For him to do. Nothing. God, nothing. who is omnipotent. Nothing. Your take. Okay. My take, as I was looking at this scripture, yes, God said, I am almighty. I don't know which other word to use to describe that. But again, I can now see this God almighty deciding to reveal himself as such to man. Yes, he sir. said, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac and Jacob by the name God Almighty. And my prayer for our viewers today is that the Lord will appear unto you and make you see him as the Almighty indeed. Praise Amen. The Lord. In this year, God will appear to you as the Almighty One in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be part of the question. We keep on reading. Psalm 139, verse 4 and verse 7 to 10. In Genovia, you help us read that. Psalm Senendo, Matthew 10, verse 30. And I'll read Hebrews 4, 13 as we continue to describe this God of ours. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. 7 then, to 10. Verse 7 to 10. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uppermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Thank you very much, sir. Mm. Matthew 10 verse, 30. 10 verse 30. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 4.13 And there is no creature hidden from his sight, 
But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So I'd like to encourage you to also quickly read for us Jeremiah 23 verse 24 so that we can tie that question one uh, in one full loop. Jeremiah 23 verse 24. Okay. Jeremiah 23 24. Let's Look at how God is describing this passage. Jeremiah 23, verse 24. verse 24. It says, Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see him? Declares the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Declares the Lord. In Geneva, sir. From all these passages that we've just read, for 1B and 1C, how is God described? Okay, from the B part, Psalm 139, verse 4, God is described there as the omniscient, which means the all-knowing. Mm. He knows everything. Yes, sir. Even what is in our tongue before we speak out, He knows. Then if you now also look at the verse 7 to 10, it's omnipresent. It's everywhere. The psalmist will say, where will I hide from your spirit? The depths of the sea, up on the mountain, anywhere I go, you mm. can hide from the presence of God. Then if you look at also Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, God sees all we are doing. Nothing can be hid from him. Yes, sir. So we cannot say we are entering into a covenant with God and think that we can still violate or break this covenant and believe God is not watching. Yes, sir. That, okay, let me hide from God and do this one secretly. When I come before him, I would say, ah, this is the terms of the... Then we'll be deceiving ourselves. Hmm. He's seen everything we are doing. He knows everything we are doing. Wherever we run to, thinking that we're hiding from his presence, he's there even before us. Awesome. So we must... We cannot run away from him. We can't hide from him. Yes, That's sir. what we are seeing from that. I love that aspect, the implication that you just talked of. Okay. Sir. To add to that, even the thoughts of our heart. Yes, sir. What do we think in our heart? At every point in time. He knows. Hmm. So there is no hiding place. Yes, sir. So for, for someone out there, I don't know what you're really thinking, how you want, you know, you are beginning to make your new year resolutions. Make sure that your thoughts are in line with his will. You know, as we were talking, I just remember that prophet we learned in our children's Sunday school okay. classes, Jonah. Jonah, yeah. That thought he would Run escape away God. From God. And then God, the ship, God still drove him back to tell him that he's everywhere. Even in the belly of the ship, of the fish, God was still meeting With them. in the belly of the fish. Awesome. You can imagine. Awesome. Child of God, we want to thank God for thus far that God indeed has helped us. We will be back in a moment to continue our discussion. Dear viewers, in a few days we will be bidding 2020 goodbye. As we look back on the past year, we can't help but praise God for giving us an incredible year filled with His favor and goodness. Now we are looking to Him to do even greater things in and through our ministry in 2021. We also want to encourage you to open your hearts to receive all that He is pouring into your lives. The Word of God assures us that our Heavenly Father wants to be our provider. If you're believing God for a breakthrough, healing, provision, protection, restoration, joy, fruitfulness, fruitfulness, know that His supply is ever flowing to you. Be prepared to receive. No good thing will He withhold from you. Thank you for your faithful support throughout this year. Thank you for having a heart for others. We are really excited and can't wait to see all that God has in store for us next year. From all of us at ACNN TV, we wish you Merry Christmas. Church of Nigeria wishes you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And a Happy New Year. Yeah. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.
Welcome back. Remember, we've been looking at covenant with the living God as our team. Our sub team, the living God. Who is he? And in considering who this God is, we are looking at him as the omnipotent, the omniscient, and the omnipresent. And I've been in the studio with our resource persons, Sachuku Kenendo and Engineer Ovie Ajekbiyede. Welcome to the program once again. Thank you. Thank you. Now we look at the, B part, the question two. Discover how God has demonstrated these attributes in relation to man and the implication for us. You help us read, Engineer, Genesis 18, 9 to 15, Senendo, Isaiah chapter 43. One to two, and we'll take your okay. Genesis thoughts. 18, verse 9, 9 to 15. Okay. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in age, and he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a short thing bear a child, which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. So, and I would like to quickly read again Matthew 10 30. I think that scripture is important that we don't miss it. But the very hairs of your head are all known about. So, engineer, how has God demonstrated these attributes? In relation to man and what's the implication for us okay you can see god here like when he came to abraham and one thing i'm seeing here say according to the time of life. of life what is the time of life now sarah and abraham they have been waiting for many years and they were old but god who is all-knowing knew the exact time yes sir. that he wanted to bring the seed from abraham he knew from beginning. So it wasn't as if maybe things were just happening, then by chance it just happened that this no. So is there anybody maybe waiting or trusting the Lord for something? Mm. There is a particular time for that. Thing. And God already knows from the beginning, even before now. So you can see he said according to the time of life. And you can see as he was the angel was talking to Abraham, Sarah was, I can imagine maybe she was in the tent, somewhere far away, and she laughed. The Bible did not tell us that the angel looked back, or maybe he heard. He said, as they were talking, he said, but why is Sarah laughing, laughing. inside? This all know. He, he knows. <laughs> so maybe somebody is hearing, for instance, they are sharing the word of God, they are telling you something, and you are looking as if you are very serious, but inside you are making more clear of it, and you are laughing. God knows. Yes, sir. Hmm. God may be speaking to you something very serious. Outwardly, your appearance may look as if you are following you are paying attention, you want to do this thing, but you have concluded in you that this thing will not work. I will not follow it. I will not obey. God already knows. Like our daddy said, he knows the thoughts of your heart. Hmm. So we can see God is all-knowing. He's all-present. He's, he's, he's omnipotent. You can see Sarah and Abraham, they were old. Sarah has passed menopause. Naturally, they can't give birth to children, but God, who is all-powerful, at the time of life, they had their child. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Two things I just want to uh, dwell on briefly from your con the perspective you just shared. The time of life. Child of God. God makes all things good 
in his time. And this God will visit you. Then secondly, you know, you are making more clear of the word of God, uh, the way you presented it. You are looking as if you are serious. You know, maybe you are out there, you are viewing, you are making your new resolutions. But within you, you are also making plans, even to tomorrow, to go and dwell in that sin. God knows and he sees you. Have a rethink so that you will work with this God in the realm of this righteous covenant. I think the to add to what uh, Genevieve has said, perhaps I don't know whether to call Sarah a present day scientist. <laughs> you know, she, she was thinking in the realm of science. Science. That I have passed hmm. the age. So it's no more possible for me to you know you know that was the laughter yeah. that she was she, laughing. She yes, was sir. laughing. You know, but God is all powerful. powerful. Yes, sir. You see, He creates, He creates, He forms, He's the one who creates and forms humans in the womb mm. by His power. So whether Sarah had passed the age of uh, yes. pregnancy or not didn't really matter. Yes, sir. God did what He wanted to do. At the time he wanted, wanted to do it. Hmm, awesome. So, and that is the more reason why we should have that confidence in this covenant keeping God. Awesome. Awesome. So I'd like to also stay with you because as you were just contributing, something jacked up in my spirit. That Matthew 10 30. You say the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Oh, awesome. I, I, I mean, I can't I can't just imagine it. Yes, sir. I, 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 I don't know of anybody who has attempted to, to count, count the number of hairs yes. on your head. <laughs> and I don't think it's uh, hmm. something that is possible with humans. But the Bible says that God knows the number, the number, the number, hmm. the number of hairs on my head, that God knows it. Jesus. Hi. So I like so, to. Okay. I, I want to quickly read that scripture because I mean my spirit yeah. is excited. Twenty nine to thirty. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. You know, in Luke, Luke said, "It is the Father's good will to give you the kingdom." The kingdom. Just be encouraged. God knows yeah. and He sees. You want yeah, to say something? You, you to see, that? which means. Even for somebody who maybe, you know, sometimes say, oh, my head are falling off. As one force of God knows one has fallen off. <laughs> he knows. Aye. And again, if you look at um, uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to 2, we see God there as the all-powerful God who yes, can sir. deliver in all situations. Mm. He said, when you pass through fire, if you not, the flame will not kindle on you. God. When you pass through the water, they will not overflow you. So, he's the all-powerful God that can also deliver in all situations, no matter how terrible it might be. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, when we are talking about this omnipotency of God, Yes, sir. I think, for me, it is very, very, very critical and important that we understand the living God in terms of these attributes, omnipotence, yes, sir. omnipresent, and omniscience. and omniscient. You know, because if we understand him, then that will propel us to obedience. Yes, it sir. is when you understand whom this God is, he and you have a covenant with him, that propels you to fulfill that part of your yeah, covenant. Yeah. Hmm. So we need to understand this God. You know, sometimes, for me, when I think of the earth, for example, let's look at the realm of science, yes, sir. for example. When we think about the spherical shape of the earth, now, I need you to ask yourself, even those who fly in the sky, has anybody seen any string or rope that is holding the earth? Hmm. You know, when you throw something up now, it will certainly fall, fall down. Gravity. Gravity, so-called. 
if 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 you have a a football and you try to pour water on it, what happens? It will it's fall off. Fall off. But here is the earth with water on it. And it's not falling off. Hmm. Ebuka is not falling off. Jesus. And the law of gravity is not operating on it no. because it's not falling anywhere. Awesome. It's hanging in space. Okay. Hmm. I mean, I'm just saying this for us to picture the, the, the might, the power, the almightiness the of, this of, God. of this God. And so when we understand him in this realm, it will help us to obey him. Because don't forget, if you have a covenant, it's two parts. You have your part to play. Yeah, awesome. And our part is that of obedience. Obedience. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, as we were just uh, bringing, sharing those Holy Spirit inspired thoughts, I was led to this scripture. Psalm 104, verse 9. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. Talking about the seas, the oceans. You imagine. I can't, I, I can't exactly remember the two oceans that they say we are, where they meet. You yeah. see this one, the water is slightly blue, the yeah. other one is white. Yeah. Who did it that this one will not overflow into another? It is this Same awesome God. 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 The one who parted the sea and the children of Israel walked as in the ground. He has not called us to worship him in vain. I pray you understand him. That will propel you, like our father said, to obedience. Let's look at question three as we try to ride up. In the light of the above, how should we relate to God? I think we've partly answered this, but we'll look at it in depthly now. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. In Geneva, you help us read. Sign endo. Hebrews 3, 12 to 14. In Geneva, still, you read Jude chapter, Jude 1, 24 to 25. Just verse 24 and 25 of Jude. And then I'll read 2 Timothy verse 1 to off. And then we'll tie up the discussion now. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, vain. in the Lord. Awesome. Okay. Hebrews 3. 12 to 14. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jude 25 and 25. Jude verse 24 and verse 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. forever. Amen. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.12 For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Powerful scriptures. In the light of the above, how should we relate to this God, Senendo? Yeah, even from the last scripture you just read. Second Timothy. Yes. I am persuaded that he's able to keep me. He's able to keep you. Jesus. He's able to keep you unto that day. And so what it means is that, look, that gives me the confidence to place my trust mm -hmm. in him because he's able to keep me. He will keep me. Awesome. Oh, praise Sir, the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, there's a witness in my spirit. I don't know who you are, 
but you already preparing to go and cook yourself for the year. You are thinking that is what will make you invincible. Those things will fail. St. Paul said, he's the one who is able to keep. This God will keep you. All you need is to place your trust in him. He's more than ever. He's enough for you. Continue your thoughts, sir. Stand firm. The scripture mm -hmm. we read, 1 Corinthians says, Stand, stand firm, firm in, in him. him. Stand firm in, in him. him. In the living God. No shaking. Yes, sir. No running from pillar, pillar, to, post. pillar to post. If you know who you believe, yes, sir. then you stand firm. Because he's able. We have seen that he is the almighty. And he knows everything. Hmm. He is the author of all the processes. Hi. Both physical processes and biological processes that take place. He is the author. Hi, Jesus. And so he knows everything. Why should we not then stand firm in him? him. Hi, Jesus. Hmm. Rather than going to these other places, other pillar to post that you talked about. Jesus. Where Jesus. you will find no solution. Jesus. Where you find no help. Jesus. Hmm. Praise the Lord. You know, Isaiah said in Isaiah 40, 28 following, he said, there is no such of his understanding. understanding. You can't. You cannot. You, you cannot can. imagine you cannot this imagine. awesome God. All-powerful God. That means his power is unlimited. Yes. You know, even in our democratic governance structure, we have three, I think, three arms of government. Yes. The essence is to control the power of one so that they don't abuse us. But for this God, no one can control him. He's self-sufficient all by himself. In Jeremiah 32, 27, he said, I am the God of all flesh, and there is nothing too difficult for me to do. In Genovie, Okay. Your thought on this? Yes. You see that First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, like our daddy has said, always abounding in, in the, the work, work of, of the God. Lord, for as much as you know. You see, if you now know that God is omnipotent, omni omniscient, and uh, omnipresent, He's the Almighty. Then why will you be discouraged? Maybe throughout this year with the COVID and so many things, you labored and labored and labored in righteousness even when I are saying, mm. what came out of it? Hmm. I will make a way for myself for the next year. I will try and do some for help myself. Yeah. I will try and be wise in my own in eyes. Your own eyes. <laughs> scripture, is saying, scripture is saying, always abounding in, in the, the work, work of, of the God. Lord. For as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not, not in, in vain. vain. Hmm. So maybe you are even a, a, a preacher of the gospel or you, you work in the sanctuary and you are saying, this work we are doing self. Ah, uh, is this how we continue to work and die here like this? Your labor in the Lord is not, not in, vain. in vain. Our God is a covenant keeping God. One of the words he said, do not muzzle the mouth of the ox that tread the corn. Hmm. And Paul was saying, do you think he was talking about an ox? Hmm. So the Lord knows that you are laboring and your labor will not go unrewarded. Hmm. The Lord knows that you are holding on in righteousness. He knows that you are suffering because you have taken a righteous stand. He knows that you are denying yourself because you want to please him. And that denial will not go unrewarded. Awesome. That stand you have taken for him will not go unrewarded. Hmm. He knows the he knows he knows your he knows even your struggles. You have been struggling to overcome sin. He knows all the efforts, hmm. the crying, the fasting, the prayers. I say, God, when will I come out of this matter? And maybe you're at the point of saying, this thing doesn't work. Let me just give up and leave my... God knows hmm. the intention of your heart that you want to please him. And he's saying that, that struggle, that labor, trying to please him will not go unrewarded. So don't give up. For as much as you know that your labor... The labor could be anything. Mm -hmm. Could be anything in the Lord. It cannot go unrewarded because it's a covenant keeping God. 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 That's an encouragement for someone out then, there. Okay, sorry. Then also in Jude, we see that... Because you now know, you also need to worship him because he said you, you, you need to give him worship and praise and dominion. Yes, sir. Because you know that this God is awesome. He's great. He's powerful. Awesome. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I think that connects to our second aim. Yeah. That knowing this will challenge us to a life of yes, devotion, and worship. worship, and service. And just like our brother said, the engineer, Hebrews 6, Bible said, God is not a man as to forget all your labors, labors of love. love. 
And he said, I have not called the sons of Jacob to worship me in vain. Joseph labored. He suffered in Egypt in the house of Potiphar. He was falsely accused. But God took him from prison to the palace. This same God is still doing wonders in our time. And as you make up your mind, year 2021, to walk with him, he will arise and come through for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Conclusion. Our God is much less in all ramifications. He can be trusted. As we start the year 2021, let us come to him without reservation and no holding back. You know, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they came presenting, but there was they some reserve. Hold back. Let's come to him without Not reservation holding. and no holding back. Let's give him our all. Let's give him all we are with total devotion in life, worship, worship and service. As we start in joy and peace, so we pray to end the year in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. David said, I've been young. Now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. God will fail, will never fail, because he's a covenant keeping God. And I pray that you place your trust solely in him, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Food for thought. Our God is, is awesome. awesome. Let's take our memory verse together. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Okay. We read it together. Neither, Neither is there, there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Nothing is hidden from him. Yes. He knows our frame. Yeah. He knows where we are coming from. And he knows the intents of our heart, like our brother said, even for this year. Make up your mind to walk with him in covenant, and God will take you far this year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for today. It's been an exciting moment in his presence. What a joy it is to start the year learning at the feet of Jesus. We are grateful to our resource person. Senendo, God bless you. You too. And may this covenant keeping God uphold you and Amen. keep you Amen. even this year and beyond in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brovier, thank it's you. always a joy. Thank you, sir. May God continually uphold you. Amen. And may the boundary line this year continually fall onto you in pleasant places in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank our crew. What an awesome job you guys have done in the year gone by. We are trusting God that this year together, this covenant God, we keep all of us together. As we commit more to continue bringing the undiluted word of God to all our viewers, even unto the utmost ends of the earth. You want to reach out to us this year. You want to partner with us to make sure that the vision of the Advent Camel Network on that communion is taken a notch higher. The social media handles are now scrolling on your screen. The numbers to call are also there. Make sure you get committed to God this year. I'll see you again next week as we continue to build together this Bible study for the year. God bless you. Jesus.